very good to cloud. Okay, so not a lot was missed. Uh, what are we gonna do now? We're gonna we're gonna try to SSH into the ECE servers using PowerShell first. So as you can see, you you do SSH, SSH, and then my my ECE LRC account add whatever server I want, which I'm gonna go with Mario for now, dot ECE uh, at you, at my, yeah, dot ECE dot U Texas dot EDU. And it's gonna give me a prompt to put in my password. And from there, I'm able to get access to uh, the same, uh, my Linux machine, my Linux servers in the ECE department. Right, that's all good, that's great. So that's, if you don't have mobile XTERM, if you have mobile XTERM, you probably have everything set and done for you in the recitations, okay? So let me clear up this and let's open up a new one so that everybody can follow along through here. Okay, I'm gonna go over the PowerPoint and then come back here and start showing you step-by-step step so that people figure out what is going on. Okay, I see the shed going crazy. What is this? Oh, gosh. Yes, you need to connect to the VPN if you're off campus. If you're not connected to the UTEX's Wi-Fi, you need to connect to, uh, to get the VPN. I have the VPN connected before the lecture. That's why it works fine. Uh, Uh, I would really recommend mobile XTERM. I'm reading the chat, sorry. PowerShell is Windows. Uh, I think uh, Mac has, term. just type terminal, you will find it. It's the same thing, pretty much. Mobile XTERM doesn't really have a GUI. As you can see on the screen on the left-hand side here, this is like the only GUI part of it. And I, I'm not going to touch it in this recitation. I'm going to tell you how to do everything from the terminal. So you don't have to touch any GUI stuff. Like you're not going to be working with a GUI. You don't need a virtual machine. You don't need a virtual machine for Apple or whatever. Virtual machine is just going to make your life so much complicated for this class. Okay. So since I answered a bunch of questions, let's go back here. So this is some of the PowerPoint. Do you have an EC, Andrew, do you have an ECE LRC account for you to be able to SSH into your, your thing? You need to have an ECE LRC account. You should have done that in the lecture or before the recitation. Okay, let me get back to the, uh, to the lecture. So as you can see here, uh, I don't know, let me put it in the presentation mode. F5, right? Oh, it's not working fine. Okay, I can put it through this. this. Okay, so this is how you access it from the PowerShell or the, or the, ter or the ter terminal, right? Through the PowerShell, you just put your uh, ECE LRC account then you choose the server, .ece, .edu. So this is the basics. Uh, I divided the presentation into two. So there is basics and there is bro. The basic stuff is just gonna be like, uh, as you can see here, CD, LS, MKDIR, making directory, changing directory, touching, which is creating a file, RM remove, CB, which is copy paste. Uh, those are the most important basic functions. And uh, these are like the ones you need as soon as possible. And then from there, we would be able to go through and then create, you know, be more uh, into the terminal. So I'm gonna explain more about the pro stuff afterward. So the first thing we wanna talk about is changing directory. Uh, and that's CD, CD stands for changing directory. And then comes after CD, there comes a bunch of different definitions here or unique characters. These three characters would represent different things, right? And so what is CD dot dot means? CD dot dot means, basically what you need to know is a folder is a directory so that we can establish some, some meaning to that. So there is a difference between a folder 
and a, a file, right? And so if, you, if you're changing into a directory, you need a folder to, to go into a directory. If you have a file, you can't really change into that file. Mm -hmm. So what, what does that mean? I guess the best way to do that is coming over here and showing you step-by-step. Step. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clear this so that we can start at the top, we can move our, our way through. So the first thing we wanna do is let's create a new directory so that we can all work together on this one, right? So the, the command to do so is mkdir, which stands for, mk stands for make, dir stands for directory. So this is the way you do it. You do MD, mkdir, so we're creating a new directory, which is some sort of a folder, right? And then what do we wanna call it? We wanna call it, I don't know, uh, let's call it L Linux Bros, whatever, okay? Linux Pro. So that's the, the directory I'm gonna create. So by just by just pressing enter, it moves to the next line, which means it went through that command. The command was executed. So now the way, so I created this, but on Windows, you know, Windows is pretty sophisticated. It's easy to use. You go on and you see all the folders in front of you and you, you click, you double click on a folder. You'll be like, oh, I'm going into this folder. I'm going to create this file. I'm going to, you know, right click, copy, right click, paste, you know, right click, delete this, all this kind of stuff. But on Linux, since we don't have a GUI, we're working on a terminal. We don't have all these accessibilities. You don't have the ability to just double click on a folder because I don't even see what folder it is, as you can see on my screen right now. So the way to do that is basically if you want to move, so if you want to see everything on the screen, the, the keyword to that is LS, which stands for list all current directories. So it's going to list everything that I have, right? And these are everything that I have. Some of them are for different classes, so you don't have to worry about that too much. But this is the folder that we have created together. I don't care. Uh, Linux Pro, right? Okay, now I can see everything. But in Windows, it's pretty easy. You just double click. I can double click here. So the way to do that is you change directory into that. So you do CD Linux Pro. And you see me sometimes writing like two letters and then it automatically fills up. This is like a trick. Basically, you just just tab, just click on tab on your uh, on your keyboard and it's automatically gonna understand which, which one you're looking for because that's the only one that starts with LI, okay? So now, as you can see, I see the, I changed my current directory to Linux Pro, okay? That's good because now if you look here, this is my pass, this is where I am, right? It goes home and then ECELRC, then students, then my my domain and then this file until before that file that's where my home directory is at this is where i am usually and then after that it shows you the file here okay so for example if we did make a directory and we call it uh let's call it something else i don't know directory one okay and then we again we ls we're gonna find it now so if we changed our directory into directory one, we go in there. As you can see, if you notice here, you will notice that now I'm in Linux Pro and then inside directory one. That, so that's pretty cool, right? Now you can go in, that's it. That's all we know right now. We know how to go inside a folder, but we don't know how to get outside of the folder. And that's the unique characters that I have introduced to you guys about. So the first unique character is a dot dot. What does that mean? It means get me one of the current directory I'm at. So for example, we are in Linux Pro directory one. So basically I'm gonna go one back to Linux Pro after executing this. And as you can see here, I'm back in Linux Pro. So that's the dot dot mean, okay. So let's go back into directory one. This is what I am. Can I go twice to the back? Yes, you can. You do dot dot backslash dot dot. It means get me one, and then one another back. And as you can see, I went back to my home screen, to my home directory. So that's the, the you know, that's the uniqueness about these unique characters. Okay, what if I'm gonna go back? Can I, do I have to CD into like Linux Pro? Be careful because everything is case sensitive. 
So you have to exact like the you have to put the the name of the folder exactly the way it is. Okay, can I do I have to CD into Linux Pro? Then on another line, CD into the next one. No, you don't. You can CD directly into directory one. So like this. I'm gonna CD exactly to the path that I want it to CD in. And as you can see, instead of just going into Linux Pro, then directory one, I can just directly go through both of them. So if you remember everything and you have everything organized, it's so much easier for you to move along. Uh, there is no difference. I'm just gonna read the chat quickly. There's no difference between a directory and a folder. I just use the two terms interchangeably. Uh, the ECLR sound should register immediately. Yeah, the ECLRC account should give you an like a thing as soon as you can. I would say that again for you instantly yesterday as well. Just make sure on a VB, I don't know which one. Okay. I don't know what is going on, but let's go back to the lecture. I'm gonna read the chat in a minute. Okay, cool. So now we're able to move back and forth. Okay, uh, let's do another directory called mm, recitation one, REC one, okay? Uh, no, uh, make directory, sorry. And then I'm gonna move into recitation one. Now, if I wanna go back to my home directory, you know, the, the obvious answer you guys are going to tell me here, just go dot, dot, backslash, dot, dot, backslash, dot, dot, right? But what if I told you you can just do CD tilde? Tilde is the squiggly line up there. And it's a very short, it's a shortcut that wherever you at, you do CD tilde and it goes directly to your home directory. So by doing CD tilde, it automatically gets me back at the very start of the thing. Uh, if, if any of this doesn't work for someone, let me know. Uh, but this, these are all the, the specific things. So we talked about CD dot dot. We talked about this. We talked about the tilde. We talked about feeding into a specific directory if you, if you know the path to it. We, we did LS. Uh, so what is LS? Again, LS stands for list all current direct, all, all List all, basically list all what you have on your current directory. So it's gonna list everything that you have on your current directories. Okay, so the the syntax for ls is basically ls, then a flag, then a directory, right? However, once you see in my slides a square bracket, that means it's not necessary. Like it's okay to not have a flag. It's okay not to have a directory. So let me show you some tricks about LS, right? Uh, so the, once I'm lost, I always go to my home directory, right? Okay. So can I list stuff that I'm not even on? So basically, well, first thing is I'm in my home directory, right? If I click LS and nothing, that means list everything that I, that I have on my current directory. No flags, nothing I have, right? But then if I start using flags, what are the flags that we want to learn about today? These are the flags, dash L, dash A, asterisk, dash A, dash L, dash A. So a combination of these two here. And then dash T, dash D, dash uppercase F. I'm going to tell you all about these ones. These are all the flags we're going to be using today. Uh, OK, so again, if I just did. So let's use dash A. Basically dash A means show me everything because there is a lot of hidden folders that usually you don't see. But once you do LS dash A, as you can see, I have a lot. Maybe for you, you don't because your Linux machine is new, but I have a lot of different files here. And the good thing about mobile exterm and other, and other terminals is that, you know, like the colors mean different things. So blue means it's a folder or a directory, same thing. Uh, if, and then the white means it's a file, some sort of, of a file. So this is an HTML, this is different files. Bink usually means like it's a picture or like a screenshot or something. And then uh, the green ones are usually done for the setup files. Uh, okay, so let's do LS 
dash L. Let's clear this up so that you guys can see what is happening. What if I did LS dash L? Dash L fits them in a very unique and good way to do. Because basically this time it helps you see when was the last time everything was edited. So this was edited today. This was edited last month, all this kind of stuff. So it shows like if you if you lost something and you're trying to find something around, it's going to show you when was the last time it was edited. Yeah, to, to, to clear the terminal, just write clear. C-L-E-R, that's it. So LS, that's dash A. Okay. Another one that is very useful is... Uh, ls asterisk and what is ls asterisk gonna do it's basically gonna list all the so basically once we do ls right the folders like it shows you it shows you the folders and the files but if i did ls asterisk it's gonna show you the folder and then what's inside that folder too so as you can see here, it shows a lot of things. So in directory one, it shows like in Linux Pro, the one we created, we have another folder inside it called directory one. And that's pretty cool, right? So you can go and it shows you like, oh, this, it has this files inside. So it tells you about everything without like feeding into each and everything there. It's pretty cool to do so. I'm gonna clear again. So this is LS asterisk, okay? Uh, what else, what else do we have? Okay. Uh, LS dash D basically it only lists directories. It does not list files. So if I did LS dash D, oh wait, and what is it? I think it was asterisk here yeah, like this. Yeah. This is how you do LS dash D. It only lists files. As you can see, everything is blue, which means those are, uh, it only lists folders, sorry, not files. As you can see, all of them are uh, blue. So the files are not gonna be listed. This is all for your you know, convenience. Uh, this is not like a very required thing to know, all this kind of stuff. All the flags are for your convenience. If you're looking for something around, it makes it so much easier for you to get to what you want to do, right? Okay. Uh, another thing about LS is basically we created, can I, so basically once I hit LS, it lists everything on my current directory. Can I LS something? Uh, the tilde means, wait, tilde percent? What are you talking about? Somebody in the chat is asking, what is the tilde percent? I don't know. The percent is done automatically. I don't do the, the percent. Tilde is home directory. Okay, um, the percent, as you can see, it's part of the move X term. Like it's automatically there. You don't need to worry about it too much. Uh, okay, so can I LS, for example, my Linux Pro? Like you can LS a specific pass. If you know the pass to something, if you know a pass to something, you can just ls Linux Pro, and it's going to show you that we have a directory one in there. I can also ls Linux Pro because we know it has a directory one, and inside that we have a recitation one folder, as you can see. So ls is not only to list everything in your current directory, you can list in, in a specific pass if you're looking for something like that. Uh, okay. So this is ls. And also you can ls at the directory before or to before, all this kind of stuff there. Dash s, I believe, I haven't used it in a while, but I believe it just lists everything in a specific order, like alphabetic order or something like that. And then dash r is the reverse of that. Yeah, you probably don't need that, but it's fine. Making directory and touch, okay. Again, I, I explained pretty much what is, uh, what is, you want to make a, f okay. I explained pretty much make directory, right? MKDIR, uh, the, 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 the funny part about it or the thing that is good to do with it. For example, let's, let's, let's create and so what if I did a make directory and I call it EE312 and then I'm going to, 
do SP, spring substr, okay? So now I'm gonna CD into that. Okay, and then I'm just gonna make a bunch of directories, right? I'm gonna create one that is called quiz. And then I'm gonna create another one that is called projects. And then another one called lecture. I think you can, yeah. So it's pretty good. You, you can create more than one on the same line of code. You don't have to create one by one. So now this is my file that I'm gonna be storing everything for the rest of the semester and access them whenever I can and have everything in there. Okay. What if I, for example, mistakenly did something, a file called, I don't know, um, design, whatever, a project. Now we have project, exam. I made a directory called exam. How do I delete it? I don't want it. So basically the way to remove something, the, the basic command is RM, which is, stands for remove, right? But then if you want to remove a directory, you do rmdir, which means remove directory. And then you write the name of the directory. And then, so if you created a file, you remove it by rm. But then if you remove a directory, you remove rmdir, okay? For we, till, till now, we don't know how to create a file. All we are doing at this point is just creating folders. Okay, it's the time, I guess, to start creating files, right? So the way to do it is through a command called touch. So basically you're touching a file. You're trying to implement this file. You're trying to create this file. When he puts after an exam. What? Okay, let me read the chat, see what's going on. Uh, oh yeah. Why would he put a backslash after exam when removing it? You can, so let me show you. So if we can, I, I don't put a backslash. As soon as I click tap, it puts a backslash automatically. And it also would work with no backslash. The backslash means if you want, if you don't want to remove, like if, you, if you're trying, the, the, the terminal is trying to predict what you're trying to remove. So for example, maybe I'm not trying to remove exam itself. I'm trying to remove something inside exam. So that's why it puts the backslash. So I keep going through if there is something in there. Does it ask to you to confirm? Uh, there is a flag that you can add to ask to confirm. But if you did it like this, it will not confirm, it will automatically delete. I'm gonna show you the flag that asks you to delete. Yeah, you don't want to delete stuff like that. You can't get it. It's pretty hard to get anything that you have deleted. No, I don't think you can undo. Exactly. You don't want to delete your labs. Correct. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, let's try the touch, right? Okay, cool. So you have touch. And let's call it, um, I don't know what we want to call it. Uh, one dot C, just our first dot C file. You also you always want to indicate what type of file it is. Uh, so you, we're putting it as a dot C file, which means it's it's a text file. So now once I ls, as you can see, I have one dot C lecture, and the one dot C is white, which means it's a file. Lecture project quizzes are all folders, so they are green, uh, they are blue, light blue kind of thing. And so can I see the into one dot C? Can I see D? No, because it's not a directory. Yes, exactly. I can't see D. If you try, it's not gonna work. It, it automatically says one dot C is not a directory. You can't see D into that. So the way to access the one dot C, I mean, this is all cool and crazy and amazing, but still. How am I, like, this is not related to my coding skills. How do I start coding? When do I start coding? RM, yeah, remove directory will not let you delete. You have to add a, a thing. I'm gonna come to it. Don't worry about it too much. I'm gonna, I'm gonna explain it in a second. Uh, to to the, wait, sorry, quick question. To enter the file, you use VIM, right? Uh, yes, we're gonna use VIM, VIM. Is that what you asked? Yeah, yeah, uh, but like that's that's one of the commands that you can use, right? Like you can use other commands too. 
yeah, you can use G-Edit, Nano, Vim, G-Vim, a lot of different things. But most programmers around the world right now use Vim. So that's what I'm going to focus on today. Uh, the Go other ones it. are really easy to use and you can figure them on your own. But I want people to use Vim because this is what everybody's using. Okay, thank you. Awesome. Uh, okay. So this is the touching file. This is the make directory. This is just, this slide is all about creating different things. This creates a directory, this creates a file, and uh, it's pretty good. Uh, the flags for this. So flag for touch, if you don't see, it checks if that file was created or not, and make sure you can create it if it's, on, if it's not created before. Dash R is basically, if you want, uh, if you want to use a timestamp of another file, I don't want to. I don't want to explain this. You guys could use it to cheat, uh, but okay. Uh, after that, uh, remove and copy paste. I explained remove, and people were asking, uh, "Can I? Does it ask you? Does it confirm if you want to remove or not?" And uh, it does not. If you did remove a.txt, this is just a text file called a.txt. It's gonna automatically remove it. If you want to remove more than one file, you can. It's the same thing. You write the first one, you, you, you have a space between, and you write the second and the third and everything like that. Dash I is the one that you always want to use. It's going to prompt. It's going to say, it's going to ask for a confirmation first for people who were asking. So if you want to remove something, again, RM only is used to remove files, not folders, okay? So for example, if I did RM remove dash I, and then I did one.c, it's gonna ask, like, do you wanna remove this or no? And then I press yes, and then it deletes it. Oh, sorry, ls. And then it deletes it. Okay, what if, okay, let's cd into lecture, right? And then I'm gonna make, I'm gonna touch a lot of, uh, a lot of, I guess, touch 2.c, 3.c, a lot of files, 4.c, 5.c, okay. And then let's go back and try to delete lecture. Can can I just remove lecture? Why it did not work here? Why is it not allowing me to remove lecture? It's not empty. Lectures isn't an empty file. Exactly. Or because an empty it has folder. Yeah, you're fine. You're right. You're right. Basically, lecture has some files in there. And that and that that's the error it's given. It's saying that lecture is not empty. The way RMDIR is only used to remove empty uh, empty files. So the way to do that is you want to, but still as a user, I want to delete the entire thing. I'm not gonna go inside and delete one by one. So the way to do that is you have to do it recursively. Recursively is is a very prominent word that a lot of programmers love to use, right? But basically. What it means is to go inside, delete everything, and then come outside and then delete the folder. So it goes from in to out kind of thing. And that basically is dash R. And then some people like to add dash F. Dash F means force to force it. If a file is not, is not if there is a file that doesn't want to be deleted, it's gonna force it. So people just do dash RF and then the name of the folder and then it, it deletes it. You can do it with only dash R, but then sometimes uh, there is some files that, you know, doesn't want to get deleted or is being used somewhere else or stuff like that. So some people like to do just RM dash RF. R is recursive, F is force. So forcefully, recursively delete this file, whatever that sentence means. Okay. So these are the different things that I have explained here. Uh, copy paste, I think, comes in here. Copy paste is pretty simple. Uh, I mean, C B copy C for copy B for paste. Uh, you can copy a file. Basically, if I say copy file dot text, that means the file dot text is on the same current domain that I am in. Yes, you don't need rm directory if you're using rm dash rf. RM directory is only used for empty files, uh, empty fo folders. So CB, basically this means file.txt is exactly on the same domain that I'm in. 
it's in the same path that I am currently in. But for example, if I, if I know where it is, it's, it's like home and then you go download and then file.txt and I just wanna copy it to documents. So that's the way it is. Copy it from this directory to this directory. But if I am on the same directory as the file.txt, I can just say copy file.txt to that directory, if that makes sense. Can you copy multiple files at once? Yes, uh, no, mm, I don't know. <laughs> the, not the most convenient answer, but uh, you can try. Try and let me know. Just make a couple of files and see if you can copy more than once at a time. I don't think you can because it takes an input and an output. Uh, a current domain and a, uh, like a next domain. So I don't think you can copy more than one file, but maybe it is. Just Google it, you'll find it. Uh, can you can you paste to multiple places at once or? I don't, I don't know too. I think you can, maybe you can. I just, you have to Google this stuff, but yeah. I mean, there is a lot of things that I don't know, to be honest. Uh, Okay, you can. Some some people say you can. They're sending me a message. If you can, just Google it and you'll figure it out. It should be easy. But I never had the urge to paste in a couple of places. But that's okay. Uh, next, we're gonna do grip. What is grip? Grip is basically like a find command, like Control F on your Windows. Is there anywhere else? A lot of people here can't access Nanda Kumar's canvas. Is it anywhere here? Uh, yes, maybe Andrew. I will. I will put it on my YouTube channel. Whatever. To be here, so we are very confused. Uh, I don't understand. Uh, what? We were told there was a video. So basically, there's another section of three twelve. Yes. But we don't have a recitation that goes over these commands. So we were just told to join y'all. Okay, awesome. Uh, are you guys able to follow along? Wait, you guys don't have recitations. Okay, I'm so confused, but it's okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna share my YouTube link and I'm gonna put this video up there along with a lot of bunch of different videos too. And my recitations are gonna be up there too. So every, if, if you guys want to access it anytime, just wait till the end of the meeting and I'm just gonna put them in chat. Okay, uh, let's do grip or before grip, I'm gonna get back to grip, okay? I'm gonna skip forward to this small exercise that I want people to do uh, for the next five minutes. And then we're gonna get back to Vim. And then after that grip and concatenation. And then after that, you guys are pretty much all set and pretty good. You have a pretty good solid understanding uh, on how to do different things. So this exercise is pretty easy and it's gonna be helpful for you guys. So you can create a directory, call it EE312. And inside that have three more directories, quiz, project, lecture. And then inside quiz, I want you to create uh, a bunch more directories, quiz one, two, three, all the way till 10. And then inside quiz one, start creating a file and call it recitation one. And then in recitation one, just 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 do it until this point, and then we will discuss more here. And if you have a question, you know, you know, just uh, let me know, unmute or something. Just stop here, and then uh, we will we will keep going after. Okay, it's not working the other way. It's okay. Is it possible to create file with the space in the name? I don't, uh, yeah, yes, yes, but it's, it's a bane, it's, yes, you can, a directory or a file, I believe, but it's a bane to access it, because a space in the Linux is perceived as uh, like a flash, something like that, so it's, it's not good, it's not good, it's not recommended. Yeah, it's, so, it's, it's terrible to do something like that, don't do it. Don't do space. Uh, I have spaces here, but underscore or put them as one word, something like that. So, like quiz one, something like that. It's up to you. Just have, we use touch to create directories. No, we don't use touch to create directories. We use touch to create files. 
we use make directories to create directories, MKDIR. Were confused by got it thank you okay you'll have to write them like this yeah don't, don't do spaces don't do spaces does anybody have a question do you guys want me to go over something and until people go through this underscore skink okay i'm a little confused on how this whole thing ties into our class so we have access to a server and we have a bunch of folders on the server but like it's just to store our files file so file. basically uh, you have 10 projects eight projects eight projects in the class right and the way i grade the projects and all the other tas are on the linux machines so all of this is just a preparation so that you know how to access the linux machine get through the linux machine and then from there, you'll be able to put your code there. And we're going to give you a grading script so that you can test your code and see if your code is working correctly or what's going on exactly. And uh, because I'm not going to grade you on C-Line, I'm going to grade you on Linux. Okay. And also, like, C-Line is not used outside of this university. Like, you're not going to use C-Line in a, in a company or anything. Uh, you're, you're going to use Linux. Everybody uses Linux. Like even I had an interview today just before like three hours ago and they asked me about grip literally. So all this kind of stuff are very important in general. So, and also, uh, and also when you go in there, yeah, I crushed it. Sure. Uh, <laughs> and then once you go into companies, I had a couple of internships and, uh, they all use the same servers to do all the different programming stuff. Nobody uses C-Line or stuff like that. Uh, no, your home directory is never cleared out. However, you're only given two gigabytes. I know the school is cheap, but uh, just giving everybody only two gigs is not enough for me, but it is what it is. So if you ever try to exceed that as specific amount of space they're gonna just the terminal is gonna cry okay uh, is everybody almost done with the stuff raise your hand do something start dancing do something yes okay thank you Okay, before moving on and going to the next step, I have to explain what's Vim. Um, basically, Vim is a text editor. And Vim is a text editor. I'm gonna move to the next slides and then come back to that one later on. I just have to explain them. So you have Nano, you have Gedit, you have Gvim, you have Vim, right? These are all text editors. Nano is kind of boring, Gedit, and G stands for GUI. So it's going to have an extra GUI that pops up. And then you start coding in there. GVIM is the VIM version, but on a GUI, which is something disgusting, like so disgusting to even see. And then finally, VIM, which is the, the, the cool software engineering stuff, right? And then finally, I'm going to do the concatenation command. So nano, it's kind of boring. It's, it's okay, I can show you. So I created this file uh, because I don't want to start coding and embarrass myself here. So I'm going to EE312. No. Like the dots, CD dot dot. What? CD space dot dot. It takes you one space back. Okay one directory back. Uh, where did I put it? Oh, recitation one? No. CD, where it is, EE312, maybe? 
what is happening. EECS, what? Okay, sorry. Okay. So, you know, I have two stuff here. I have two files here. No, no, not in E312 SAP. I'm, I'm going to another one. I have some code inside these two files down there. And I want to show you through. And I don't want to bring like, okay. I don't want to, you know, code here. Because I'm going to embarrass myself. But it's okay. So the first thing you want to do is go through the nano. So I'm going to show you nano, GVM, and then the GUI stuff I don't want to do. Because once you do gedit, the name of the file, you guys can do it. But uh, it's pretty easy, pretty simple to understand. And also it forces my computer to download stuff and I don't have space for it. But uh, this is Nano. And uh, wait, let me show you how did I get into Nano again. You write Nano and then exercise 1.c. And that's basically a text editor called Nano. And what I'm trying to access is exercise 1.c. And as you can see here, this is the code that I have in there. It's the recitation one code. Uh, you guys may have it or not, it doesn't matter. But this is the, the code that we have in here. Holy nano, awesome, okay. Uh, so it's pretty good, pretty easy. Once you start typing, it's gonna start typing in there. Start doing your code in there. Uh, I believe control U is undo, something like this. Or alt U, I don't know, I don't like this. Uh, Okay, let me go back to the slides and see what is undo. Undo is alt to you. Never mind. Okay, alt to you. Function alt to you. Sometimes. Okay, I don't know. It's okay. Uh, all I know about nano is that control X is how to exit and it's going to ask if you want to save it or not. And I'm not going to save it here. Uh, I don't want to. Okay, I'm going to do G edit. It's going to take some time to go through because it's probably going to force my laptop to download. A thing, so it's gonna take like a couple of minutes or a couple of seconds for it to download gedit on my computer, so that it pops up a GUI with exercise at one C. Uh, give me a second. It, it takes some time because it it's it's annoying. It's like two hundred megabytes or something like that. So nano gedit VMR code editors. Yes, not a question. Blah blah blah. It's okay. G the thing came up here. So this is the easiest one to code in. I do not recommend. I would give you a zero recommendation on this. Not a zero grade, but a zero recommendation. Um, I mean, it's it's uh, just, it's pretty easy to go, you know. Control C, Control V works here. Uh, kind of boring, you know? Yeah, like you're not impressive if you're using this. Uh, finally, Vim, which is the cool stuff. Cool kids only use Vim, okay? So this is Vim. Once I, uh, so basically, how did I do it again? The way I did it is, you, I'm gonna clear so that there's a lot of stuff in here now. So you do vim, V-I-M, and then you write the name of the .c file. Again, this is a file, not a folder, okay? The slides, I, uh, they are not, but I don't know. I'm gonna ask the professor where to put the slides. They are on the professor Nanda Kumar's canvas i no, nowhere else i'm gonna ask him to put them somewhere publicly how do we exit them give me a second i'll let you know oh you're stuck there okay i'll explain right now it's fine <laughs> okay uh okay N now once i'm in vim right you have to understand one thing about them okay i'm gonna go to the slides you have to be stuck for a couple of minutes until i explain how to get out of it for now how to exit nano control x it tells you at the bottom of nano, like there is something that tells you the commands there. Uh, I don't like nano. Uh, go back here, Vim. Okay, this is what you need to understand for the person in uh, stuck in, uh, what is it called? Uh, in Vim, this is how you exit, just colon Q, okay? But press on the escape button first and then colon Q. So it's, I don't know. Okay, so, for Vim, you, you need to understand there is three different modes in Vim. And it's pretty easy to move. Yes, WQ if you want to save and, and quit. 
exit. Okay, I don't, I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna close the chat because the, the chat is distracting. Okay, uh, we have three different modes we need to understand. The insert mode, normal mode, and visual mode. So you have normal mode in between, and then it goes to insert, and then it goes to visual. Okay, people start writing. Okay, so the way to go from normal mode to insert is pretty easy. You click I, and then to go back, you press on the escape button, which is pretty easy, pretty simple to do. Visual mode is V, and then to go back is escape. Escape is like going back to normal mode, whatever mode you are in. The visual mode is useless. We're not gonna use it for this class. So the only two we're concerned about right now is the insert mode and the normal mode, okay? Uh, insert mode is where you start coding, right? Normal mode is where you start uh, writing all these upper commands. These commands that says, that quits, that shows the line numbers, that finds the specific word you're looking for, all these fun commands are done in the normal mode, not the insert mode. Okay. Okay. Let's let's do that. So, for example, once you once you go into Vim, I'm gonna exit out of Vim and join in again. So I'm in Vim right now, right? If you if you're following along, if you're trying to type on the keyboard any of the letters, it shouldn't work. Uh, tick, Q not. If you start typing on the keyboard, it's not gonna work, right? So the, it's not gonna type anything into that file. So the way to do that is the way to start typing in, you click on I, and from there you can start typing in. As you can see, I'm typing in stuff right now. And then once I'm done typing everything, I press on the, on, on what the escape button, right? To go back into the normal mode. And then once I'm on a normal mode, there is a bunch of things you guys need to understand. First, what is colon W? Colon W stands for save. How? I don't know. Where? I don't know. This is how it is, okay? So it's colon W. That's for saving the file. Colon Q is for quitting. But all of this, remember, is not in insert. Everything is in normal. This is in normal mode. So let's go in again. So colon... Uh, Q, uh, we, we did W, we did Q. What if I want to quit without saving? It's Q not. Exclamation mark is just like Boolean algebra kind of thing. It's like Boolean, it's not. So I want to exit without saving, basically. That's what I'm doing there. And also you can combine two things together. So you can do WQ, which means save and exit, basically. Okay? So that's pretty good. That's like, I guess, the, the very basic stuff of them. How to exit, how to go in, how to type, what's the different modes in there, how to move between the different modes, all the fun stuff like that. And then, okay, let's go back to the PowerPoint presentation and see what, it, what else did I write. So again, these are the file related command. I need to zoom in probably. Okay, the file in uh, the file related commands, the colon W, it just saves it to the desk, colon Q, quits, WQ save and quit. And then this ignores, wait, quit only. Uh, okay, so calling Q is the one that exits without saving. Uh, Q not means ignore the warning and discard the change. Like it just don't do any change. The same thing, both of them are the same thing, I guess. Uh, deb, uh, colon W in, and then you put a name, it saves it to that. To, if you wanna change the name basically of that file, you wanna save it to the different name. This is inserting. Uh, so I don't care. Okay. Uh, undo and redo. Undo is U. Uh, control R is redo. Again, this is all. You don't need that much stuff here. Copy paste is Y. And then if you want to copy an entire line is Y, Y, paste is B. And this is all in normal mode, not in insert, because insert Y is just a letter Y. B is just a letter B. I'm gonna I'm gonna put the, the PowerPoint off if I'm going too fast or something. D, it's basically uh, I usually do D D if I'm deleting something because it's easy and just keep keep spamming D and it's gonna delete the entire line. So I'm gonna show you here. So I'm just gonna do D D D D as you can see. It's cutting the line. It's like I can base this somewhere else, but as you can see, I'm just deleting the entire thing because I'm just cutting and replacing the thing with the new one. 
And then the way to do is I'm just gonna quit or quit and don't save. And if I go in again, everything is back. Okay, so hopefully that is good. Hopefully you guys make a little bit of sense from this. And uh, I guess that's that's pretty much Vim. Uh, there is uh, one more thing I need to talk about. Uh, about Vim is the fit number. It's pretty pretty cool. Once you're like on the, the Linux machines and you're coding and you try executing the files, it's gonna throw, it's gonna give you the errors. It's gonna say like on line 56, you have an error here. On line 57, you're gonna have an error here. How do I know what line it is? I mean, on the bottom right hand side here, 49, that's the line number, but that's annoying. Like I have to keep scrolling and all this kind of stuff. It's not fun. The way to do that is you put set number, colon, set number. Oh, wait, what? What is it? Colon, set, special number. Yeah, okay. Colon, set, number, two different words. And as you can see here, I see all the lines here from line one all the way there. So once the terminal tells me, oh, you forgot the semicolon and line 37, I can come here and be like, oh, Oh, I forgot a semicolon here. I need to add it here. Oh, I forgot a bracket here. I need to add something here. So it's pretty, pretty good to do so. Okay. Uh, uh, also, there is one command. I don't know how usable it is. It's the, basically, if you want to switch all the numbers, you set none numbers. And then set number not is basically doing exactly the opposite of what you have. So for example, we do colon set number. So it gives you the number. If we put set number not, it's gonna do the exact opposite. If we do the same thing again, like set number not, it's gonna do the exact opposite. If the lines are shown, it's gonna hide them. If they're hidden, it's gonna show them. Uh, that's pretty good for now. Okay, one last thing. Um, how I'm gonna so basically make clean. Oh no, make clean. Oh, sh 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 clear. Sorry. So now you guys know how to create files, how to create directories, how to move around, how to delete files, how to copy paste, all the different stuff in there. But still, how do I run my program? This is the last step that we have here today. How do I run my program? How do my program run? How do I test my program on here? So the way to do it is, I'm gonna tell you, just give me a second, let me go through. I'm gonna post on the YouTube channel, blah, blah, blah. Let me read the chat if there is a specific question you guys want me to do. The recordings, I'm gonna put it on my YouTube channel. Yeah. How comes yours has color? How many lectures have you all had, lol? We we had, what, two lectures? One, I don't know. How do you, how do you copy paste code from C line to mobile X term? Uh, you copy them that, like control C and then on Vim you do record. Are you? Yes, I have recorded over the break some videos that help students. If you if you want to check them out, it's again on on YouTube. Uh, are you what is it? Yeah, if you want to copy something between C line and Vim or something like that, you just copy paste and then you know how to paste them right from the PowerPoint. I think that's all. Uh, do the videos cover the same material? Uh, some of them do. There are more material up there that you guys will cover later on. Will you post the PowerPoint? I don't know where to post them. I will ask the professor to do something about them. Maybe send it to your professor to, to post it on Canvas. Google Drive, um, maybe, we'll see. Uh, you can you can ask Ethan how, how lazy I get with this kind of stuff, but it's fine. Uh, okay, one thing you guys need to know. On C line, you can just, I'm gonna close the chat again. In case, uh, one thing you guys need to know uh, on C line, we downloaded something called Sigwin. 
if you are in my class or I don't know what you guys did. Piazza, Piazza, Piazza. Okay, what is going on? Okay, okay, I'll put it on Piazza. Sure, sure. But not everyone is on Piazza. Uh, so I'm going to try to put it somewhere on the Google video. Don't worry. It's going to be a link for it. Don't worry about it. Uh, okay. On, uh, on C-Line, there is something that we have added or downloaded, all of us, called Sigwin. And I have explained how to download Sigwin from one of my videos. So what is Sigwin? Sigwin is basically like a compiler, a linker, a, re a preprocessor. Uh, it does all of this stuff for you. So once you run the programs in C-Line, it goes through the entire cycle and executes your program directly for you. It builds it and executes it. But then on Linux, you don't have that capability. You need something called make file, right? For the, the C files. So that's what I have here. I have my exercise one.c and then I have my make file. So if I if I'm gonna show you what is inside the make file to just give you an understanding. So every time you need to run a program on Linux machines, you have to have a make file. On C line, you don't because it's automatically generated for you. But on Linux, you will have to, to get one. Ha, it's not the hard, you usually use the one that we provide to you, and then you tweak it a little bit. Okay. So the first thing you do is here, this is the name. This has to exactly match the name of your exercise. So it says exercise one here. So the one, the other one, which is here, has to be called exercise one.c, as you can see here. They have to match. And then all, all is happening here. This line prompt the, the linker. This line prompt the assembler. This line prompt the compiler. This line prompts the preprocessor, and this line is, is triggered when you want to clean the files. Do I need to understand every line in here? No. For now, you will eventually, but for now, you don't at all. You just know what each, at least what each line is doing, and if I want to put it on a different files, what do I do? You just change that name here for all of them here. So exercise 1.0, if you decide to call it i hate my classes it's going to be i hate my classes that oh the other one is going to be the same thing i hate my classes that s i hate my classes dot c here okay uh that's basically it and that's the exercise when dot c that we have here so how do i start compiling the first thing you do is you want to make the file right that's the first part of it so once you you press make as you can see, it's going to trigger all the different things inside the make file. And as you can see now, I have a lot of different things. I have now, I only started with exercise 1.c and make file. Now I have exercise 1.0, exercise 1.f, preproc.c, a.out. <clears throat> These are all the different files that the make file has created. This is all I need before even executing my uh, exercise.1c. So after that, after making, I do dot slash exercise one. No, dot slash a dot out, because that's the output file that I have executed. And then from there, it's now running through the program and it's gonna give me three sentences that we expect the output to be. And then how when sometimes the, the, the terminal is gonna freeze, the way to get through that is control C. Okay. That's a very good trick. Control C, okay? So that's basically how to run the three different things. If there was an error, it's going to throw the error here. So let's try to make an error, right? Let's go into exercise one. Let's see. Oh, God. Uh, let's see. And let's try go insert mode. And let's maybe take, I don't know, this semicolon off. Okay? And then I'm gonna save and quit. I'm gonna, I'm gonna first after like you have to do make clean. That's the last line of the make file that triggers the clean functionality to start cleaning all the dot o dot f dot blah 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 files. And as you can see, it removed a dot out exercise dot o exercise one dot s pre proc dot c. All these files are deleted. So if I ls now, you don't see them again. You only see the two that we started with. And then if we again did make. 
it's not going to make because there is an error and it's throwing at you. It's telling you you have an error in line 40 and it's an expecting something, a semicolon. It's not going to be very you know accurate with what mistake you're doing, but it's like telling you at this line, go check out, you're missing something. And so if I vim back in into exercise one, let's see. And uh, the way to do it again is set number, I think. Yeah. And then line 40. It's saying there is a problem here. That doesn't mean it has to be in that line. It just means maybe the line before it has a problem. And that's what we have here. I go to insert and I add my semicolon here. And then I call in WQ. And now if I make again, everything works fine. And then I, all I do to run it, to run the executed file is a.out. And I am golden basically. Now the file is just working fine. My life is good to exit out of this control C and that's pretty it. That's pretty much it. Uh, one more thing is the cat concatenation. Cat is pretty good. If you, if for example, let's clear this so that I can explain it. So again, what do we have? Uh, just make clean. I'm going to clean all this garbage here. If I LS here and then I clear, clear my terminal LS. Okay. If I, if I don't want to go inside make file and I'm trying to do something from the outside, all you can, you can just write cat make file and it's going to print out to the terminal the content of that file. If you're like, if you want to look at something really quick, you don't want to vim inside or do anything like that. This is the concatenation uh, sort of command. Okay. Um, I don't know what else. Uh, that's pretty much it. There's also one more thing called diff, but we're already over the time. I'm not going to explain it now. Maybe I'll put it in a separate video or something. Uh, that's pretty much it. I want to know if you guys have any questions. That's um, if anybody was following. And uh, I'm just reading the chat to see if there's any questions. Stay for a minute because I'm going to post my YouTube video channel. And uh, could you go over Grib? Where do you post the videos? I'm going to put it on my YouTube channel. Let me put the link in because I know you guys are going to kill me before I put it. Give me a second. Uh, grip, I'm going to, I don't know if you have time to go over grip. Grip is like fine. Uh, just if, you, if you're very interested in grip, Google it. And it's one of the questions that I had in the interview. So I understand it now. Okay, cool. That was fast. Yes, dash dash help will give you the stuff. Okay. Oh, I'm sending it to a specific person. Sorry. Uh, this is my YouTube link. Uh, yeah, don't forget to like, subscribe, add me. Those kind of <laughs> Uh, uh, what else? Uh, that's pretty much it. I am going to release the video there and uh, I'm going to ask the professor what's the best way to add the PowerPoints for your convenience. But that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, stay here and uh, we can chat. If not, you're good to go. Hope you're having a good week. Stay safe and stay warm. Thank you. No problem. I'm going to stop recording now. Stop letting me stop. Oh, wow. Okay. I'm, I'm going to start making money from YouTube now. <laughs> it's not letting me stop. What the heck? Stop. Okay, whatever. Are you sure you want to stop?